Hi y'all, in this video I'm going to cover about 30 different turning uh, turning tips, tricks, and, and jigs. This is a revised, uh, partial revision of a, a longer video I did about four years ago, my first long video on turning tips, uh, uh, tips, tricks, and, and jigs. Uh, I had some bad camera angles, which I, which I fixed in this video, and it caused a lot of people to, to drop off early on in, in the viewing, and, and I had a lot of negative comments, and I had a lot of dislikes, so I thought I'd clean it up a little bit, and I cut out five minutes of, of unnecessary transition time between the different, uh, the 30 different uh, tips. One of the biggest jigs and fixtures I've got is this, uh, this tool case, because it's very handy, to very uh, well designed for me, it makes it, uh, I can stand here at the lathe and reach out and get whatever I want. Uh, I've got this, this shelf where I've got a lot of small items on it, and I used to, I put a couple of pegs on the side so I could put calipers on it, but then when I ran out of four pegs in room, I made this extra little uh, drop down piece. Uh, so let's look at a couple of items here. I've got these various uh, store-bought calipers that hang here. Uh, but in addition, I've got some inexpensive ones from Harbor Freight. Um, don't use them too often, but, but if I do, they there. Here's another little set of uh, calipers, uh, just basically some spring wire, uh, and, and that, that works. Uh, this idea is from uh, Dave Ellsworth. Here's a great little simple uh, jig I use. Basically it's just a quarter inch drill and a handle. I don't do a lot of vertical pressure on it so I really didn't need a finial. I just epoxied it in and I took a file and marked off some simple distances of about a half inch, an inch, uh, so I can know uh, how deep to go. So for doing a depth drill for bowls or boxes you know I just mark the little hole and just drive this in and clear it occasionally and it works out great. some larger ones. Uh, frankly this is what I started with and this is a quarter inch works great but then when I saw somebody on the road that uh, traveling demonstrated showed a small one I thought gosh why do I need one so big? Um, I do use this occasionally if I have to drill a bigger hole but that happens very seldom and then this is a little uh, rubber uh, grommet I can set the depth on. I don't bother to put one on there because I got it marked. But there's another technique. Uh, here's a larger one um, with a, a grommet on it. Uh, this is, I think, 3 8 inch. Uh, this one, these flutes are very, very sharp, so you better grab it here when you're driving it. And because it is a larger hole, it's much more aggressive and will have a tendency to snatch this out of my hand and start spinning on me. So I don't use this as often, uh, but it's available. I do use it occasionally. If I had to do it over again, I'd make an oval handle or and a bigger handle to get a bigger bigger grip on it. But normally, the difference between doing a quarter inch hole and a bigger hole, all you need is a depth hole, and a smaller one tends to work for me for most things. But I have these others. I think Dave Ellsworth said that there is no such thing as a bad tool, just some you don't use as often. So I don't use these as often as I do these. I find putting a uh, handle, just a, uh, a round dowel with a, a hole all the way through makes it a little easier for you to stabilize this whichever way you you do it to drill that, that hole and it reduces the danger from some of those that have very sharp flutes that are fairly fairly close because it gives your hand a safe place to be. Uh, a few other little items here. Uh, uh, this shout out is from my buddy Pat Harris in Columbia, South Carolina. I was visiting and he had the same Harbor Freight uh, uh, spring punch uh, that I do, but he turned a little wooden knob on his to make it a little easier to use. And I thought, well, that's a great idea. This bore brush, I uh, got this tip out of American Wood Turner. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bronze bore, uh, bore brush uh, mounted in a handle. It works great for cleaning out. It's, it's great for cleaning out your spindle gouge of, of uh, uh, ships and shavings. Uh, which keeps this from getting galled because if you don't keep it clean, sooner or later you're going to have problems. So you can use this in your tailstock and your middle. Um, this little bowl uh, depth, but having this little holder for it 
what really makes it handy. Um, so here's my uh, depth depth gauge for bowls and larger boxes that works well. I just loosen this and set it to the appropriate depth. Here's a very small one on the same concept that just works with friction with a little smaller uh, brass brass rod through a hole that I have to press down against the surface to get it to slide. Now this doesn't really necessarily work better than just you know fitting a a spindle gouge, setting a finger on it in, inside a hole and, and measured against the outside. But the trouble is when I set this down that measurement is gone. When I set this down that measurement is there so I can have proceeded along on some additional processes and I can go back and still use that that reference and the same thing with uh, with this. Once it's set I can pick it up and if I go deeper on a bowl I can get set, it, set it against the edge of the bowl and I don't have to uh, to worry about you know going in there and measuring it again and, and then measuring against what because I've already set the the, uh, the, the depth. Um, here's a couple of little things my Pyromatic I want to show you. Here's how I use a large rubber band uh, to keep the uh, lock on the tailstock in a neutral position and I find that find that helpful. So I can slide that uh, with that large rubber band. That's a, a handy thing. Uh, I kind of like that. The, the one thing I don't like, which is kind of a, a nit, I like to put a rubber band to keep this in a neutral position. Uh, and there was a flat spot on, on the B model, but there's not on this. So, you know, you got to figure out how to fasten it here with, without tearing up the rubber band because if, if it's here on your hand wheel, it's going to, as you turn it, it's going to uh, keep breaking that rubber band. This shut off uh, emergency cutoff switch I made. Take the plastic bag off and you can see it better. But basically, it's got this big magnet. It's an indoor or outdoor box, uh, waterproof box, so it's got a sealed uh, foam gasket. And it simply has a, uh, a paddle switch that I got from, I think, Grizzly uh, to turn it on and, and off. Uh, I keep it near the edge of the, the end of the lathe. I cover it with this plastic bag because that keeps the chips out of here that sooner or later are going to destroy that switch. Um, and this seems to work well. I think one of the, the, the best features about this, I can move it to the end of the lathe, but to make it truly work, I have to use it, and I have to use it a lot. So if I'm in an emergency, I will automatically shut it off. So I practice using this when I'm down on this end of the lathe. Okay, the next one is a tip I picked up from John Jordan, not exactly a jig or a fixture, but um, periodically I use a little WD-40 on my bedways, and then I use a, a scuff pad, uh, a real coarse one, to just kind of rub it in and clean it off a little bit. I don't get crazy about it. Uh, I have an indoor basement shop that's temperature controlled, so I really don't have a lot of uh, concern about about rust. But this does make it a little easier to clean up if I'm doing turning on something that's uh, uh, got a lot of uh, like red oak that will have a tendency to do the lay, uh, cause the lay the rust or discolor. And I just put it in a plastic bag and seal it seal it up and uh, put it over near the foot of my lathe. Um, um, here's a little trick I picked up from uh, uh, Cindy Drozda uh, video from a demonstration at one of the uh, AAW symposiums. Basically it's just some flexible hose uh, and I put a mouthpiece on it, not because it makes it blow any easier, but it, it reminds me which end is the is the cleaner end versus the dirty end. But I use this, uh, I can wrap it up and slide it in my toolbox if I'm turning off site. But it's great for small little hollow forms or boxes where you can just simply go and, and, and blow out. Um, another little device uh, I use occasionally for small hollow forms is this uh, flashlight. Um, I think I picked this up from Harbor Freight, I don't remember. 
but it's flexible and you can stick it in and, and see you know what the bottom looks like without any any trouble uh, so I use it anytime I need a small uh, small flashlight it's LED and it's bright enough for most of the things I want to look inside I want to talk uh, about a couple of uh, calipers this is a set of calipers I found on the internet this uh, a kit uh, you just some heavy spring wire and this clamp is used for um, clamping two pieces of cable together uh, and you can squeeze that and you squeeze this one this size uh, tight actually I might put that in with a little CA glue this one is loose and then this is a, a stop collar that you buy from hardware store wherever you buy this and that stops uh, this from sliding too far down and the way that thing works is when it touches you wrap some color or paint uh, down here with some uh, uh, colored duct tape so if if that if I caliper the wall thickness and this is on the inside I can see actually what the uh, diameter of that, uh, that wall thickness is by looking down here uh, I use these for quite a while they're not too terribly expensive to make but eventually I found a deal on Amazon so I bought I bought uh, uh, some of these calipers and, and frankly I just like these better it, it shows the same thing it shows the reverse depth that it's, this is inside the vessel and this is what you evaluate on the outside you clamp it it holds a little bit better um, it just seems to work better and, and they weren't very expensive and I got them on on sale from one of the tool, tool vendors so I use this one more frequently than I, I use this but that's a technique um, I showed this little set of calipers in my last video on uh, coffee scoop but probably I didn't illustrate as well as I could have that this fits inside the bowl near spring this is spring steel uh, music wire as opposed to uh, coat hanger wire so it'll spring back and maintain its shape and I put this in the bowl that's at the rim and that lets me know how tight it is how much more hollowing I need to do and it's it's simple but but it works it's uh, it's effective it's good enough here's some burn wires uh, different size diameters uh, this is I think probably 10 or tw uh, 10 or 12 gauge copper wire it works real well for doing a nice burn line and I just loop it around uh, put these knobs on it so I can hold it they don't last forever because after a while uh, they get hot and this gets hard and, and brittle and, and eventually breaks but it's cheap and easy to replace so it's it's good enough um, this one is made out of a piano wire I, I said piano wire I'm sorry guitar wire I got from my son uh, when it's past its use, useful life uh, for a guitar uh, and it's it's wrapped and it's this does very well for smaller ones and then I've got a little friend of mine gave me some nichrome wire. I'm not sure what it was used for, but you know, if you ever get an old toaster, you can probably take nichrome wire out of it and use it uh, for very making very small detailed uh, beads. And again, you got to put some kind of knob on it because you don't want to wrap this thing around your finger. So I've got three different sizes. Okay, I want to show you a simple uh, center finder that I made. It's just basically a piece of plexiglass with uh, I used a compass to. Uh, draw these circles and uh, scribe a line on it and I rubbed a little uh, color in there from felt tip pen make it a little easier to see but you can put that and orient it like this until you you find out exactly where the outside of that line gives you a, an equal distance all the way around and then you can mark it uh, easily enough by using a uh, an awl to mark mark that center hole. I made this little little awl, it's very small, and I only use this basically for um, taking these various templates that I've got here for different diameter sizes. So I've got them marked at about one inch diameter. Um, and When you find the size of the bowl you're going to use, say for example in this case where uh, 7 inches is fine,
and you line it up. I could put a screw in here, but I find that just using this little awl will hold this just fine. So then when I come over here, to cut it on the bandsaw, It holds it. It holds it just just fine, and, and that works. That works for me. Other uh, cutting templates I use. I I just use some scrap uh, uh, paneling to mark some sizes. Uh, this is 17 inches if I needed to hold that up if I was doing some chainsaw work. But, but I've got a 4 inch square, so two 4 inch squares is a 8 inch depth. When I'm cutting a uh, large spindle stock out of a larger piece of wood, I can use this to help uh, uh, measure that, that distance. I also have some smaller ones for uh, 2.5 inch, uh, so I, if I'm measuring the middle of through a log, I know two and a half gives me a nice, uh, nice size spindle stock. Uh, pepper mill type size, something a little bigger for a little larger box. I have some marked three inches, and, and they're just easy to pick up and set down. Of course, I could use a, uh, uh, you know, always use a tape measure. But these things are just easy to set down and mark with a piece of chalk and pick it up and just use it as a reference. Uh, and they they wind up simpler and easier to use than than using a uh, tape measure for me, but I do keep a tape measure handy. Let me show you a couple of examples of wrenches that I use. Um, I use a spindle adapter uh, to go from my one and a quarter thread on my Powermatic to a, a one inch thread on this smaller set of jaws. And occasionally I'll have a need to take this off, and it's hard to grasp here and 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 take it off. But I found an inexpensive uh, plumbing wrench called a slip lock uh, lock nut wrench that works uh, that works uh, just great for this thing. And then I can hold this in place and get one of the Tommy bars to help leverage it. And, and break it free without any trouble. And this works on uh, uh, face plates that have a flat on it, so there's any number of things. It's not an expensive wrench, it's not very precise, but it's GE, it's good enough to get the job done, so I keep it handy at my, my lathe. Another uh, wrench I've used occasionally is a simple uh, pipe, uh, not a pipe, but a uh, oil filter uh, rubber uh, belt uh, wrench, that, that can work real well on any number of, of things. So I picked up a couple of these from Harbor Freight. I'll never use them on this one, but they work better on, on my chucks that have nice smooth bodies when I need to disengage a, a chuck that might have gotten a little tight onto the, onto the spindle. So that's a handy, handy device. Let me show you a couple of uh, drivers that I use for bowls. Take this off. I'll put on my tight chuck to illustrate. And this is a, a an Al Sturt bowl driver. Uh, basically, I cut a tenon on some glued up a couple of large pieces of dried uh, maple, uh, turned a tenon, drilled a hole, put a, uh, I think, 3 eighths or 5 sixteenths inch um, a bolt on it, and smaller bolts on each side with a T-nut so I can adjust these if I need, need to. But this works just great if I'm doing a very, very large blank where I want to balance the grain. I drill a, a small uh, hole on the blank to anchor this, and then I can shift the blank from side to side uh, 
uh, to orient the, uh, uh, the grain and they'll engage on one or both of these spikes and hold it just, uh, just fine. Uh, another driver, again that's Al Sturt, got that idea from Al Sturt, I think he has instructions on his uh, website for that. Another one, uh, this one was from somebody I think on, uh, on Sawmill Creek, uh, Jerry uh, Markintel, and he calls this a, a, a Markintel driver, but you use a bunch of uh, screws and cover up a wooden face plate and you can put different uneven surface wood on here and I have two size tenons, one for my, my Nova uh, Supernova 2 chuck and then a larger tenon for this one. So if you had a, a large blank you can actually use this instead of a normal or typical um, uh, two prong uh, drive center because it gives you a larger surface to snag onto that wood with and again an uneven surface so this this can work real well under uh, some circumstances. Uh, tool storage, let me talk about that briefly. Uh, I have this little tool rack that goes on this uh, extension and with this extension I can take the my tailstock, slide it on here and then I could just move that whole uh, little storage unit out of the way so I don't have to lift up this 57 pound monster and set it, pick it up and set it down. And this has got a little, you can see the little L, L cleat on it that just drops in place. It's got a little cutaway here so I can slide this all the way back to the end and not interfere. And it just makes it real easy. Uh, you take a little strip of uh, uh, one by pine, drill uh, Forstner bit holes in it and then cut it down the middle and then you get these two pieces that make it very easy to sort through your tools. Um, this little tool stand I built, very handy. I have this little extension if I need to put some extra finishes on here or sit down there and take a note, write a note or something. That's very handy. Uh, I intentionally put the drawers here on the side because uh, it, it lessens the chance for filling up with, uh, with dust and, and dirt from turning it if I had it on the front. And now let me show you this Lay's storage box underneath the lathe. Uh, some people immediately start building a ballast box when they get a big lathe thinking that they need to uh, make it more stable. I haven't found that necessary on this uh, 500, 500 plus pound uh, uh, lathe but I did find it handy. I got this idea from Joe Rominski up there in Asheville, North Carolina uh, and it's just for putting larger uh, tools and, and putting uh, unused uh, tool rests. Here's a simple spindle steady rest I made if I have to do large spindles. Nothing real fancy. 2x4 construction uh, with a uh, clamp, clamp block that goes between the bedways. Basically a couple of old skateboard wheels I got uh, from got a, a pair of skateboards uh, or, the things you put on your, your feet and uh, go down the street in. And it's they've simply got a, a carriage bolt between them with a notch as a cutoff that will accommodate different size spindles. And uh, it'll adjust just a little bit to accommodate uh, minor, minor differences in measurement when I set this up. So that's an accessory. I don't do a lot of big spindles, but uh, it's handy if I'm doing something where it might tend to cause a little, little chatter or vibrate. Get that out of the way. Something that I'm not sure I'd call it a jig or a fixture. It's more of a, a technique or a process, and that's organization and how you store things. Um, that You can see I've got two pencils with uh, little rare earth magnets taped on 
Uh, so I, I've always got those things where I can easily reach them on my lathe. Near the end of the lathe, I've got some more rare earth magnets that came out of an old hard drive. Uh, that I can, if I've got something lightweight, a tool, I can just stick it against that and it'll, it'll hold it. Um, let's, let me show you my, another storage. And that piece of PVC pipe uh, screwed to the end, that contains a one inch Morse taper drill bit again it's just it keeps it handy it's it's available when I need it within just a uh, finger fingertip uh, distance now let's look at some tool storage so I've made this tool uh, rack, this lazy, lazy Susan, so it spins. And I repurposed an old steel case uh, chair bottom that the wheels work just fine. The chair was shot. Um, so I've got uh, one, two, three tiers of tools uh, that it'll accommodate and it will spin because I've got a, you know, a four inch lazy Susan race and ring uh, apparatus picked up from hardware store or uh, wood turning vendor. Uh, my overflow is this goes in this bucket and I also use this bucket when I'm traveling or demonstrating or, or wood turning off site. Um, basically it's just a round circle that wedges uh, three-quarter inch plywood with holes cut out for the tools. tools just drop in. Uh, at the bottom of it I've got a few shavings and a piece of uh, latex foam. Uh, some people have gotten real fancy and filled one of these things up with uh, PVC pipe. I haven't found that to be all that useful so I, I didn't bother to do that because again this is good enough. It's got a handle on it so it makes it easy for me to carry and it makes it easy for me to strap it in the back of my SUV uh, to keep it from tipping over. So that, that's a handy uh, uh, tool storage uh, unit. Uh, let me show you this really handy uh, tip I got from uh, my buddy mentor Mark Soleil. Uh, basically it's a cookie tin and let me pull that up and, and show you uh, how it works. It's mounted to the end of my Powermatic with some uh, large magnets. And basically, it's got a slot cut in it. And here's the large magnet. And I put this, screwed this little uh, uh, dowel uh, or turned knob in there. You take paper towels, you wrap them with uh, some some tape, and cut them off in sections on your bandsaw. They look a little, little crude around the edge but it doesn't really make a lot of difference and you have this wonderful little dispenser for finishing that's always handy. It's just, it just works like a dream. You pull it out and it almost just tears off uh, like, a, like it was designed for that. So this, this is very handy. I use this for friction finish and dye and just all sorts of things around the lathe. So this is a very, very handy little technique that just pops up. Another little tool I want to show you, this plumber's reamer. Uh, this is a very handy little gadget. It has a little, little bar in there to make it a little easier to ream. I, don't, I can't remember whether this is high speed steel or carbon steel, but these flutes are very, very sharp. And if you have any type of small hole that you need to enlarge just a little bit, and that could be a handle going into a hole on a cup for a coffee scoop, or it could be the uh, entrance hole on a birdhouse ornament that needs to just be a little bit larger, or 
the small hole for the perch where the, you didn't get the perch sized exactly right. You could just put this in there and ream that hole slightly uh, larger and it just uh, holes on globe ornaments for a finial that weren't sized exactly right that need to be a little bit larger. Uh, this is just a very, very handy uh, tool for enlarging that, that, that hole. I hope you found something in this video useful to you. If so, uh, please consider subscribing. And if you're interested, I've got a, a playlist of uh, these longer tip videos you might want to watch by uh, clicking on the, on the link above. Uh, I've gone to shorter tip videos, but they don't seem to get as much white watch time. So I may go back to waiting until I get a bunch of them and do uh, fewer but longer tips videos. Let me know what you think. And if you've got any uh, uh, tips, tricks, or jigs you want to share, you know, you know the drill. Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Y'all stay safe here.